Hey everyone, I'm Catherine and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be covering the mashed potato murder case. Now, this murder took place in a little town called Dubbo, New South Wales, Australia. This case kind of hits home for me because the two people involved, the two main people involved in this case, are actually from my hometown of Newcastle, New South Wales. This is a pretty terrifying case. Let's jump right in. Sarah Tarrant was 24 years old when she met 33-year-old Alois Rez. Sarah and Alois met in my hometown of Newcastle, New South Wales. So there was approximately a decade of an age gap between Sarah and Alois. Sarah's parents split up when she was quite young and Sarah was essentially raised by her mother. Now it's said that Sarah's mother was not approving of her relationship with Alois due to their significant age gap. So because Sarah was 15 years old when she met Alois, you can imagine that she and her mother argued a lot about her spending time with her much older boyfriend. And the arguments between Sarah and her mother were so severe that eventually she ended up leaving home and moving in with Alois and his mother. And Alois's mother, her name was Zonia. Sarah was 17 years old when she had her first child with Alois and they went on to have three more children together. So they became a family of six. Alois was part of the Rebels motorcycle gang and apparently this caused a lot of conflict and arguments between Sarah and Alois. Now it's said that Alois wanted to leave the motorcycle gang so he could you know, prioritize his family and he wanted to leave that gang. However, he was very concerned about how the motorcycle gang would deal with him deciding to leave. Eventually, Alois did leave the motorcycle gang and because of his concerns in response to how they might deal with that, him and his family moved to various cities. So initially they lived in the central coast, then as a family, they moved to Port Stephens area and they eventually decided to settle into Dubbo, New South Wales, Australia. So Dubbo is about 400 miles away from Newcastle, New South Wales. And Alois was actually born and raised in Dubbo by his mother, Sonia. So it was kind of familiar and that's where they settled in as a family. So Sarah and Alois and the family moved to Dubbo, New South Wales in 2012. Now, initially they didn't have a rental agreement, they didn't have rental accommodation, and so they ended up staying with Zonia, Alois's mother's friend, Raymond Roth. Now, Raymond Roth was in his 50s. He was around 50, 51 years old. He had a son who was Alois's age, and Alois and Raymond's son really got along. They got along like a house on fire. So he allowed uh, Alois and the family to move into his house temporarily. So the agreement was that while they searched for rental accommodation that Alois and Sarah and the kids could live with him until they found somewhere else to live. Raymond and Zonia had a long history of friendship. So apparently the two families so Alois's family and Zonia's family, they'd been kind of acquaintances since the 1970s. So there was a long history with respect to their friendship before they moved up um, into Raymond's house. So Raymond reported that he was ecstatic to have the family living with him. His wife had died a couple of uh, years before the family moved into his house. She died of cancer and he was reported to be quite lonely. And so he really loved having the family, the kids, you know, the people around all the time. And Raymond was really happy with the arrangement and with the family living with him. Sarah and Alois trusted Raymond so much that they often let him babysit and they became kind of like a secondary family. So Raymond, his son, Alois, Sarah, the kids, they all got along like a house on fire and he babysat and they had a really strong connection. Eventually, Sarah and Alois found some rental accommodation and they also became friends with a man named Hamish Lowe. Hamish Lowe was going through a bit of a difficult time financially. He had his own child. And so Alois and Sarah said, you can live with us for the time being. So their family of six became a family of eight, including Hamish and his son. So you had Sarah, Alois, Hamish, his son, and then the four kids living in their rental accommodation in Dubbo. Hamish described Alois as a tough teddy bear. So he had a tough exterior, but that he was such a soft and kind man deep down and in his heart. So Sarah reports that the kids settled into school and she started to have doubts with respect to her relationship with Alois. So she told Raymond and Hamish that he was lazy, he didn't help around the house and at times during arguments he became physically and verbally towards her. 
The report showed that Sarah started talking to Raymond and they started confiding in one another. So Alois would be out of the house and Sarah and Raymond's friendship really progressed. So Sarah would often confide in Raymond that she was feeling detached and disconnected from Alois. She informed him of the during arguments that she endured by Alois when he became very, very angry. And similarly, Raymond spoke to Sarah about how lonely he was feeling after the death of his wife. And they had these deep conversations quite frequently and they started, Raymond and Sarah started spending a lot of time together. And it is said that Sarah started making some sexual type comments and during, as a part of their friendship and Raymond started reciprocating those types of comments. They had a 27 year age gap between Raymond and Sarah. So it's a bit weird uh, thinking that they're saying sexualized comments to each other. The friendship I can understand, but sexualized comments, number one, she is in a relationship. And number two, there was that 27 year age gap. In March of 2013, Sarah and Raymond's affair took it to the next level. It became sexual. So it is said that Sarah would expose herself when he was visiting as a friend at the house and they were doing very sly sexual things to one another at the house where the kids were and where Alois and Hamish were. So they really progressed their affair and, and did you know suspicious things at the house all the time. Sarah and Raymond just could not get enough of each other. So they saw each other every single day. If Raymond didn't come to the family home to visit, they would text message each other and they would go and meet in different parts of Dubbo. Now, Raymond grew up in Dubbo, so everyone knew who he was. So they needed to be very tactful with their affair. So it is said that they used to message each other and meet under this bridge where not many people would see them. So if they were traveling in a car or walking together, they might've been observed and their relation, their affair might've been exposed. So to combat that, apparently Sarah and Raymond would text each other and then meet to have their underneath this bridge. And Sarah became absolutely obsessed with Raymond. She fell in love hard and she's apparently started writing all of these letters to Raymond saying that she's in love with him and that she wants to leave, you know, she's not happy in her relationship and their relationship really progressed to the level where Sarah was somewhat obsessed with Raymond. Alois and Sarah weren't married. They'd been together for 10 years, but they never got married. Apparently in Sarah's letters to Raymond, she was saying that she wanted to marry him and she wanted to be with him forever. So it's a bit of a comparison. She's just really fell quite hard and fast for, for Raymond Roth. And Raymond wrote back similar things. He said that he would be a fantastic husband and father to her children. So the, the obsession was very much reciprocated between 50, 50 something year old Raymond Roth and 27 year old Sarah. In May of 2013, Sarah found out that she was pregnant and she knew deep down that the child was Raymond's, not a Lois's. She told Raymond and Raymond gave her an ultimatum. He said, you come and live with me, you break up with Alois, you and the children come and live with me, we will raise your child and we will become a family. And he said, you've got three weeks to do this. And if you don't do this, I'm going to leave you. So he was basically saying, there is no way you're going to live with Alois and your children and pretend that my baby is his. You leave him and you come and live with me or we're done. Sarah knew that she wanted to be with Raymond and apparently Alois was already suspicious on their relationship. Apparently Alois always made comments to Sarah about how he knew that she was cheating on him. So I think she already had one foot out the door and then it was her decision. Was she gonna take the other foot out the door and really end the relationship with Alois and start a fresh life with Raymond or not? Apparently, so after Sarah was pregnant, she and Alois got into a huge argument where he basically confronted her and said, I know you're cheating on me, you're doing this, you're doing that. It became a huge argument where Alois chased her around the house, grabbed her by the hair and was ripping her around the house by her hair. Sarah was terrified and she got her phone during the argument and she texted Raymond and basically said, he's attacking me, you need to call the police. Now, apparently Raymond did call the police, but when the police got there, Sarah told them that nothing was happening and they, they can leave. Now, I understand that often she, she might have been fearful for what would happen if the police came, spoke to her, and then she remained in the house. So there's probably a reason she didn't disclose what had happened to the police. But after the police came, she did not tell them what had happened. And Raymond was reported to be quite upset about this because he saw that as an opportunity that he might be locked up, Alois could be locked up, and that could be the start of their relationship. So they could take their relationship to the next level. So. Raymond was reported to be quite disappointed that Sarah did not inform the police of the vicious attack by Lois. 
on one of the next occasions that Raymond and Sarah hung out, Raymond is said to have grabbed a bag of sleeping pills and given them to Sarah and basically said, my deceased wife used to take these pills. I now have no need for them. But I do know that Zonya, Alois's mother, is going away in June. And what I think is you and I together should get rid of Alois in June. And he basically made this proposition to Sarah to get rid of Alois. Raymond is said to have said to Sarah, all you have to do is find a way to give him some of these pills and I'll do the rest. So it is said that Raymond didn't tell Sarah exactly what he planned to get rid of Alois, but that he said, you give him, you find a way to give him these sleeping tablets, you tell me and I'll come and I'll, I'll take care of it. Sarah decided to cook a meal which included a side of mashed potatoes. And within the mashed potatoes, she put a lot of those crushed up sleeping tablets in. Now she fed Alois the meal and you have to remember at this point in time, Hamish and his son are still living at the house. So Sarah fed Alois the meal and she said that she observed him to become very, very, very drowsy. Now, as he's becoming more and more drowsy, she sent a text message to Raymond basically saying, nothing is getting in the way of tonight. After Alois had consumed the mashed potatoes, he became very drowsy and he was sitting on the lounge in quite a, a disheveled state. And it is said that Hamish and his son came home and Hamish saw Alois and basically said, are you all right? Like what's going on? He, he could clearly tell that he was medicated or drugged up. And apparently Alois responded to Hamish and said, I'm all right, I think I've just taken too many painkillers. So it is said that apparently Alois was taking painkillers for a back or a, an injury that he had sustained differently. So he responded and said, it's okay, I've just taken a, a little bit too much of my painkillers. And so Hamish disregarded it and wasn't concerned and, and Alois stayed on the lounge in that disheveled state. While this was happening, Sarah and Raymond were messaging each other backwards and forwards a lot. So Raymond was asking Sarah, did you remember to turn the CCTV footage off? He asked her whether she'd turn the sensor light off and Sarah was responding, yep, I've done all of that, I've done all that, I'm ready, I'm prepared. So this is all in text message. At approximately 2 a.m. in the morning when Alois was in a deep drugged up sleep, Sarah texted Raymond and said, it's time. Now Raymond came to the house and this is from Sarah's perspective, so I'll tell you why we're talking from Sarah's perspective at the end. But it's important to note that the police still don't know where Alois's body is and they still don't know the method of death. All we know is that Sarah texts Raymond, says come over. Raymond comes over, Sarah leaves them upstairs in the room. She comes back downstairs to keep a lookout. And it is said that while she's keeping a lookout, she was standing at Hamish's door and he woke up and looked at her and said, what are you doing? And she was like, oh, nothing and walked away. So Sarah wasn't in the room, she wasn't there. And she says she has no idea what happened in that room. What Sarah does know is that Raymond wrapped Alois's body in all of their bed sheets and he brought the body downstairs and he couldn't, he was having issues with lifting the body into the trunk of his car. And so he said to Sarah, come out, I need your help. So Sarah came out the front and helped him load Alois's body into the back of his car. And that is the last time that Sarah saw the body as well. Raymond took some of his belongings with him. So it looked to, to make it seem like he could have just left the family. So he took his tobacco and his phone with him. So, you know, creating the illusion that he might have just skipped town. As I said, there's never been an autopsy because the body has never been found. It's actually, I'll, I'll talk about this further at the end, but Raymond has never disclosed what happened in that room or where the body is. He actually still denies having any involvement with the murder. The morning after the murder, Sarah wakes up and she notices that all the bedsheets are gone. So she goes out and buys some new bedsheets and she carries on with her day like nothing had happened. It wasn't unusual for a Lois to leave town or leave the house for like three to four nights. And so, and so Sarah and Raymond thought that they could get away with it and they didn't tell the police at the start. They waited until you know, three or four days had passed. And it was actually Zonya who said that she started to become concerned. She hadn't heard from her son in a while. Hamish was messaging him and getting no response. And so when Zonya and Hamish started saying, you know, we're concerned, we think he's gone missing. That's when Sarah and Raymond thought, well, we're gonna, we, we should appear to be the ones that inform police. So together, Raymond and Sarah went and made the report to the police that he, that a lot was, was missing. So of course the police interviewed both Sarah and Raymond and during those interviews, Sarah told the police that Alois was involved in a motorcycle gang and that she he'd been getting messages, threatening messages 
from the motorcycle gang recently and that she was concerned that that was why that the motorcycle someone from the motorcycle gang had taken him apparently he was receiving text messages like get out of town we're coming for you police initially thought yeah that could be plausible but then when they conducted some further research into the matter and circumstances they realized that he left the motorcycle gang years ago there had been absolutely no contact why would they randomly start threatening him now of all time so the police started to poke some holes in the case or the the story that sarah was telling them the other thing that made police really suspicious is that when alois and sarah lived in newcastle and they were receiving threats from the motorcycle gang apparently alois spoke to the police about it and he reported his concerns to the police and so the police were concerned and confused as to if that was happening now why wouldn't he report it to the police like he did last time so that was another thing that raised suspicion with with the police and not believing sarah's story that it was the motorcycle gang that had taken him the police also queried if he was taken in the middle of the night how could no one hear anything you've got four kids you've got hamish and his son you've got sarah how can you be taken in the middle of the night and not one person heard anything? Initially, the police reported that there were three people of interest. So Hamish, who lived at the house, Sarah, the wife, and also Raymond Roth, because Sarah and he came together to the police station and they made the report together and he was apparently the wife's best friend. During the initial investigations, none of the three gave the police any helpful information. However, the police found that Sarah was saved in Raymond's phone as hot, sexy mama. And so the police started asking questions and they became aware that Raymond and Sarah were having an affair. And of course, this provided the police with a motive, a potential motive for why Sarah and Raymond would want to get rid of a Lois. Sarah and Raymond were brought back to the police station for further questioning. And while they were being further questioned, the police actually took their phones and started going through their phones. Now, this, hap this is happening at the same time. So they're in the police station, their phones are being reviewed by the police and there's an, a team of investigators, police investigators, that have gone back to Sarah's house. Now, what the police investigators found was a single drop of blood in the cement outside the house. They test the blood and the blood comes back as Alois's blood. Because of the blood, the police suspected that Alois was either dead or seriously injured rather than just missing. And so the nature of the investigation took a, a turn. It was being considered as a potential homicide. Now, as all of this is happening, a local fisherman saw a, a sheet in the harbor and he thought that that's weird. Why would that sheet be in the harbor? He calls the police, the police come and they investigate the sheet. On the sheet, they find traces of dog hair and the dog hair matches Raymond Roth's dog. And so it looks like the body had been in the car with Raymond Roth's dog. And so there's more physical evidence that the police are gathering to, 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 to link Sarah and Raymond to the murder. The police then seize Raymond Roth's car and they find a whole heap of blood in the car. They also find the bag of sleeping pills in the car. And it's at this time that the police have printed the transcripts between Raymond and Sarah. And you recall that on the night of the murder, they're messaging each other saying, there's nothing that's gonna stop tonight happening. There's nothing getting in the way. And Sarah's saying, you know, I've turned the CCTV footage off, the camera's off and the sensor light is off. So all of this is happening at once. And you know, you've got the physical evidence amounting, the blood at the front of the house, the bed sheet, the blood in Raymond's car, and then the phone transcripts. Raymond denies everything. He admits nothing to police. But at the same time, Sarah cracks. The police start showing her the transcripts and, you know, they're asking her questions. Well, what did you mean by this? Well, what did you mean by this? Well, what did you mean by nothing's getting in the way of tonight? And Sarah responded, you know, exactly what I meant. I didn't think she is. She says to the police, I didn't think that Raymond was going to hurt him. I thought that he was just going to scare him. One of the text messages from Sarah to Raymond was, I can't wait for the pills to kick in. And, you know, the police ask, what did you mean by that? And she says, you know exactly what I mean. But Sarah maintains her position that she wasn't there. She thought that he was just going to get a bit of a scare and she had no idea that it was going to be a murder. It was during this interview with the police that Sarah admitted that she made the mashed potatoes, she crushed up all of the pills, put it in the mashed potatoes and fed it to a Lois. Again, the police ask her, well, why did you do that? And she says, 
well, I thought it was going to scare him. I didn't think that it was going to go this far, etc. So what the police have here is a whole bunch of physical evidence, the text message transcript, and now you have the two prime suspects contradicting each other. In response to Sarah's disclosures, the police arrested both Sarah and Raymond for murder. The courts and the police accepted that Sarah did not physically kill a Lois, but their position and the case that they ran was that she was instrumental in the planning and other than physically doing it, she was heavily involved in the planning she had the motive and she was heavily involved and in, she did everything other than physically the act. So as I said, Raymond has always denied murdering him. So to this day, the police has never said, yeah, this is where I put the body. This is what I did. He denies it. With, even with the physical evidence, the transcripts and Sarah partially disclosing that they both planned this murder, he still to this day denies it. So Raymond Roth was eventually convicted of premeditated murder. He was sentenced to 32 years in jail with a minimum of 24 years. Now, Raymond Roth actually appealed the decision saying that the sentence was too harsh. And surprisingly, the courts agreed. His sentence was reduced to 25 years with 18 years with parole in just 18 years. Sarah Tarrin was found guilty of manslaughter on the grounds that she was not fully mentally stable and wasn't completely aware of what was going on. She was sentenced to 10 years with a minimum of eight years before the opportunity for parole. Sarah is actually currently eligible for parole now. Regarding Sarah and Raymond's unborn child, so the child was born in prison and the child is currently living with and being cared for by Sarah's mother. So not Zonia, Sarah's mother. To this day, Alois's body has still not been found and the method of death is still not known. So Raymond still to this day denies being involved. What do you think about this case? What do you think should have been this sentence for both Sarah and Raymond? What are your comments? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, don't forget to actually like this video. And if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one.